How's everybody doing today? Yes. God bless you. Thank you for that powerful worship. Praise the Lord for every man that is here. I believe that God has a word for us this morning. I, it's a privilege for me to stand before you. Uh, I want to thank uh, Brother Chris, uh, God is in the ministry, all the partnering and, and co-laboring fellowships that are here this morning. I want to thank everyone for accepting Jesus Christ and being a man of God. So um, we're not just regular men sitting here, but we are full-fledged men that are sold out for God. And if you're really not there, God is bringing you uh, along mm -hmm. as well. So today I have a, a message slash testimony uh, the title of this message that God had put on my heart is A Cure for a Troubled Heart. You want to write that down for those who are taking notes or make a mental note. That, that God has a cure for a troubled heart. And one of my goals or my prayers this morning is that to just kind of do a self-examination on where we're at in our hearts towards God. Uh, it's very significant, and, and what, what God sees in us is where our, our hearts are at. Uh, one of the things that the world looks at is uh, our successes, our accomplishments, uh, how much money we have, uh, what, have what have we done, or, or our outward appearance. But God is concerned with the heart. Amen. So my prayer is that... As the word is being preached, as we're being led by the Holy Spirit, if the Holy Spirit reveals areas in our hearts that God wants us to adjust, grow in, or, you know, lift it up to him so that he can heal it and touch it, please, please, please make a mental note, write it down, because you're going to have an opportunity for God to touch that area in your heart so that we can be healed. Uh, my goal this morning is that we leave this place pumping 100% for Jesus Christ as men of God. Uh, I want us to turn to one another this morning. Uh, uh, turn to that fine looking gentleman on the side and say, heart check. Heart check, yeah. No, everyone, uh, the, the distinguished gentlemen that are here that are, that are you know, thriving for God, we were doing a heart check. And I want to turn to Matthew 22, Matthew 22, if you have your Bibles, your phones, please turn to that because I want to kind of lead with this uh, scripture to kind of kind of start uh, this process of, of what God thinks about our hearts. Matthew 22, 36, we're going to be reading a few verses out of that. I'll give you a quick little time for there. Say amen. If not, say hold on. Amen. Matthew 22, 36. At this time, uh, Jesus was being asked by the teachers, the, the religious teachers, uh, and it picks up right here. It says, teacher, which is the greatest commandment in the law? Jesus replied, love the Lord God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest commandment. What I want to point out is in this scripture, Jesus is saying that everything depends on the heart. Uh, he just didn't lead with this answer by chance. But if you notice the sequence that he was talking about is that he said, you must, you must, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart. Then he goes on to see all your uh, soul and all your mind. But, but, but what I want to focus on, that he wasn't just doing this by chance. It wasn't, he wasn't just doing this uh, from a whim. But he realized that everything flows from our heart. And if our hearts aren't right, all other things will be hindered. Are you following along this morning? Yes. yes. What caught my attention is that he mentions the heart first. Uh, I just want to just pause uh, right now and just kind of highlight what the heart is. If you notice, physically and both spiritually, the heart is the center that affects the whole body. Uh, the heart is the center that 
uh, controls our spiritual uh, health and our spiritual condition in front of God as well. And it provides life-giving blood to the entire body. If the heart is not working properly, the whole body is not working properly. I want to highlight this powerful instrument that God uses. If you just think with me, a physical heart beats over 100,000 strokes in a 24-hour period. It, it contracts, you know, the heart contracts over 4,000 times per hour. They say if you drain your blood out, it weighs up to 25 pounds of blood if you put it on a scale. And the heart is able to pump the blood through the heart uh, uh, every four minutes. All that 25 pounds of blood pumps through our hearts. Although we are speaking about a physical heart this morning, I want to uh, just kind of highlight how Jesus uh, uses the heart as an example, as, as a spiritual picture of the familiarities that, that he, he, he reflects and he highlights of our control of our heart as it controls our spiritual condition. In order to get a true appreciation of what Jesus is saying in this text, we must understand how important the heart is to Jesus. How important, how valuable, how vital it is to the hearts of a believer. Turn with me to Proverbs 23.7. It's a beautiful scripture. It says, for he thinks in his heart, so is he. There again, Jesus is referencing that everything stems from the heart. As we think in our hearts, we become the things that we think. That's why it's so important the times you say to guard your heart, to guard your mind, because the devil knows if he could contaminate your heart, he could spoil the whole body. In fact, uh, there, uh, in history, one of the ways that the enemies did warfare against each other is that they would poison the wells. If they could just drop enough poison in the well, when the people uh, were, would drink the water, they would become infected. So the devil wants to hinder us and how we loved our God. And he says, the greatest commandment is to love God. So the devil said, look, if I can't stop them from loving God, I'm going to hinder them. If I can't stop them from loving God, I'm going to contaminate it so that they're not producing an adequate love towards the Father. Are you with me this morning? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. God speaks about this uh, heart throughout the Bible. The heart is uh, far more than a bodily organ. The heart is the control center of our spiritual health. You remember uh, when we were young men, uh, maybe in middle school, and when we uh, we had girlfriends or we had the girl we had a crush on, and and it would write on our peachy folders. Who had a peachy folder back in the day? You would write your, your name and the girl's name, and you would put a what? A heart in there. A heart is it, it, our emotions flow through our heart. Uh, if you get uh, shocked or or taken back, the first thing you do is you put your hand on your heart. Also, when you pledge and you make vows, like National Anthem, we put our hands over our heart. You see, also the heart is a seat where we uh, make decisions and our actions stem from them. Psalms 14.1 says this, The fool said, in his heart, there is no God. So, if you notice, when, when this man said that there is no God, first it says it was from his heart that he spoke. The, 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 the thought, the decision was already established in his heart. Then he spoke out that there is no God. That's why it's so important uh, because we know that, that the heart is a crucial area for our driving forces 
decision makings, if you notice, the fool made a decision that was established in his heart. Yes, sir. That's why we must be diligent and manage and steward our heart position towards God. Luke 6.45, uh, if you want to jot that down, Jesus speaks and teaches us that a good man brings good things out of good stored up in his heart. And an evil man brings evil things out of evil stored in his heart, for the mouth speaks what the heart is full of. You see, that's why we know, we know the conditions of certain individuals, it's not hard to identify conditions and, and, and discern where somebody's at because the mouth tells on your heart. The mouth reveals what the heart is. See, we have trouble. We, we all have trouble now and then. We all have trouble now and then because we're fighting against something that is called sin. Just like a normal heart has a virus or a, or a sickness that attacks it, we as believers have sin that is meant to, to, to sabotage and destroy our hearts towards God. It's a sin is like a virus to our spiritual heart. The heart is also the seat of life. Psalms 22, 26 says this, the poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. The thing is, is that when we're, this body is gone, our heart, our spirit our, is going to continue to go forever. The heart remains. The heart is, is, is forever and it will be alive. That's why the devil knows it's one of the most important things that he needs to attack. Also, you know that God looks not at the outward appearance of a person, but he looks uh, at the heart. Uh, like, like I said earlier, it doesn't matter how tall you are, how strong you are, uh, how much money you have, how much uh, worldly accomplishments that you have. God is concerned for the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7 says this, But the Lord said to Samuel, do not consider his appearance or his height, for I have rejected him. The Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Brothers, I need us to get this. My assignment is that we really, really must examine and take the time to really be honest with ourselves to see where our hearts are at towards God. In fact, God no, 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 just not only just looks at the heart, but it says that God ponders our heart. Proverbs 21, 2 says this, every way of a man is right in his own eyes, but the Lord ponders the hearts. Uh, this word ponder, uh, it goes into like an in-depth study. Uh, sometimes, you know, you say you read your Bible or do you study your Bible. So God not only just looks at our hearts, but he's willing to go deep into the cracks and crevices of our heart and he studies it. And he not only studies it, he ponders, right? Imagine we think about things. When we think about these revelations, birth, imagine God looking at our hearts, pondering our hearts, and, and getting so much revelation from us. He cares about us, brothers. He cares about us. He cares to take the time to consider our hearts. But God has a cure whenever we are in trouble. The Bible talks about the, the, the depravity of the heart. Proverbs 6.18 says this, a heart that devises wicked schemes uh, are quick to have the feet that rush to evil. So, so also there's versions that say the imaginations, the, the heart uh, has imagination. So I want to take the time to just ask ourselves, what are we thinking about? What are we imagining? What are we leaving real estate in our mind that the devil could pack imaginations? I wonder if, would it be if, 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 if I could just do that to that woman? 
I, I wonder it, it, how it will be if, if I could just, uh, you know, be the best of all the people, right? What is it that we are imagining? What is it that the enemy have a, a hold on our minds that he tries to push us forward or brings us back to our old lifestyle, right? Have you ever been sitting down and you're following the Lord and you're all saying, man, why was I thinking about what I did like 10, 20 years ago, man? And it just, it's fresh and it's, it's alive and imagination, the heart brings it up and, and it devises and, and, and has the imagination. So we gotta say, wait a minute, I'm not, I'm gonna take authority over that right now in the name of Jesus. And I'm going to see what God thinks. Take it captive, right? Jeremiah 17, 9 says this, The heart is deceitfully above all things and beyond cure. It's deceitful above all things and beyond cure. Who can understand it? Matthew 15, 8 says this, These people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. We're familiar with that. You see, have you ever been in a church setting? Have you ever been lifting your hands? Have you ever been in, even at a church breakfast, and we're physically here, but our hearts may be somewhere else? Yeah. That's how the enemy attacks us in our lives with trauma, right? You know, he could take us back to when we were a little kid. Uh, he'll transport us in our thoughts, in our minds, and bring our heart back to that moment when we were young kids, and we relive the trauma the letdown and the rejection that God uh, that, that God wants to deliver us from. Brothers, I am standing here this morning to testify that I had heart trouble. I, I, I not only had heart trouble physically, but I also had a spiritual heart condition and I was dying. The enemy was destroying me. The enemy was winning and I needed help from God. And I'm here to testify and give us some tools and strategies that, that, that God will come in and he does have a cure for a troubled heart. You see, we're going to be using Ezekiel 36 and I'm going to be sharing how God healed me from a double heart transplant. Ezekiel 36 reads like this. 36.25, it says this. I will sprinkle clean water on you, and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all impurities and from all idols. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this cure, Lord God. We thank you that you know and you have the prescription, Lord God. You have the antidote, Lord God. So, Lord, we are open, Lord God, to receive uh, your healing right now, Lord God. And we thank you, Father, that you love us so much that you're giving us a heart check this morning and a realignment to come back under your will to have clean hearts and clean hands. In the name of Jesus. And all God's people said? Amen. Okay. In the early 2000s, uh, I was sick. I didn't know Jesus, so my spiritual heart was, was dying. And, and also, I had a physical heart for I was diagnosed with cardiomyopathy. If you guys know what cardiomyopathy is, it's, a, it's called heart failure, chronic heart failure. And what happens in the heart is that the heart is not able to pump enough blood to the rest of the body. So what happens is that the heart and the starts failing, but not only that, everything that we learn is affected. You can't eat, your digestive system can't function. You can't hear because your, your hearing begins to leave. You can't taste because your tongue needs the blood to taste. You can't see because your eyes need the blood to see. You can't process. You can't walk. You, your skin, your muscles begin to die. Your, your, all your body, your skin decays. It needs the life-giving blood come on now, come on. of God. Yes, sir. You see, sin had me dying. Sin had me decaying. So what did I do? I was double dying. I needed a double touch from the Lord. I needed a double heart transplant. So what did happen? What did I do? God gave me the strength, not by my own, but when I cried out to him, he brought me to church. 
brought me to church. I didn't know why I was there. I didn't know, but all I knew is I was dying and I needed to get on a winning team. I needed to get on a team that wins championships, right? You see this sports people, they go to the best teams to win championships, but if you need a healing, you need to get on the best team, which is Team Jesus. Amen. We serve a God that never lost a battle. So what did the Lord do? He says, hold on, hold on, hold on. I need to deal with your spiritual heart first. I need, there's a sin issue. We got to get that right. So I ended up going and giving my life to the Lord. Learning and falling in love with God's word. God began to put godly people around me. God began to change my, my heart, my, my, my spiritual heart, right? And I ended up going to, to, to Bible studies. How many know that the Lord is the mighty physician? You see, I was going to doctors, I was going to uh, checkups, I'm, I'm seeing this opinion and that opinion, and I was going everywhere else but the mighty physician for what he thought about me, for what he wanted to diagnose uh, in my life. So God, being faithful, right, yeah. he gave me an opportunity uh, to, to, to accept him as my Lord and Savior, but not only that, he began to lead me through this uh, recovery Right? Uh, just like the world doctor writes prescriptions and doctor's appointments, he began to write prescriptions. He's all, you need to go to the morning prayer. You need to go to the midweek. You need to be around the fellowship of the brothers. I'm going to partner you with one of the pastors. You need to hit these appointments and times because I'm doing a spiritual healing in your heart. Are you following along? Come on. You see, the Lord cleaned me up. And once the Lord Clean me up and said, okay, now we are good for eternity. Now your, your spiritual heart is saved and you're going to be with me forever. So now let's deal with that physical heart that you need, right? I was dying. My heart was, was I, I, I was sick. Uh, I was skinny. I was, uh, um, uh, what did I say? I used to drive the carts uh, in Target because I was too weak to walk. Uh, I, I, I couldn't eat. Uh, I would throw up. I, I couldn't see. I couldn't hear no more. I couldn't. I could. I didn't have the energy. I was losing muscle. I. I think I weighed like 140 pounds. Uh, I, I, I was dying. They said that I was uh, the equivalent of strength of a 90 year old man, and I was only like 30, mid 30s, early 30s. But Jesus came into my life, and I started to transform. So I started going to the doctors and I started believing, I started praying. Of, how many of you believe in miracles? Mm -hmm. How many of you know, you know that God is able to do miracles? So I went to one of the prescriptions, go to that healing service at night. We got, we got a pastor from uh, Uganda that was partnering with us and he, he miracles. He's, you know, he's, he's out there, you know, he's believing in healings, he has the faith, he's gonna, you know, he's all, go, get, go to that service. So that night in the service, I'm lifting my hands and I got called out. He didn't know my testimony. He just said, there's somebody here with a troubled heart. Mm -hmm. And I stood up and he's all that. And then I, and I go, that's me. And then all of a sudden he started to pray for me. And I, for the first time, I felt my heartbeat powerfully out of my chest. Boom, boom, it's racing. And I'm like, whoa, you know, he, he prayed for me. He called me up, call me up, come up. I come up and he started laying hands on me and I started receiving the healing. And then uh, the Lord said, it is done. What the Lord gave me was an illustration of a tightrope. You guys don't know the tightrope walkers? Yes, so so I'm, on the, I'm on the tightrope and God put the safety net under me. So he said, from here on out, in six months, you're going to be healed with a brand new heart. He's all, trust me, it may look like you're falling, but keep going because I got a healing from you. It wasn't an instantaneous healing where my heart was totally transformed and my body working 100%, but, but, but there was an end result. Yeah. And just what God told me, he was faithful because six months later, I got a phone call from Cedar sinai Hospital offering me a brand new business. Woo! Amen. I can remember that day coming from church. I'm in the, I'm in the, I'm in the prescription. I'm in the, 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 the process. I'm going to my appointments. I'm reading my word. I'm praying. My spirit is, my faith is being uplifted. And I came back just from getting prayer on the cross. Do not, do not, do not uh, forsake the prayer at the cross. It's not just a routine. It's not just like, hey, it's just a part of the service. I'm going to go and I'm going to pray. No, when you go get prayer for that cross, believe that God is going to change your life. 
I came home that day. I'm eating a small salad after getting prayer, prayed for at the cross. And the call came in. Mr. Ramirez, we would like to offer you a new heart. So everything was set up. I went to the hospital. The, the, the heart was waiting for me. Uh, they dropped the heart in that night. And, and, and I had the peace of the Lord. I was in this process. I was, I was trusting him. I was believing for him. A matter of fact, I was telling people I was healed. Church people, I'm saying I'm healed. And they're looking at me like, man, that medication is messing your mind up, right? <laughs> like, no, 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 I'm healed. You don't understand, God. I'm going to get a new heart. I'm going to be back to work. I'm going to be able to have a family. I'm, like, I'm going to be able to uh, 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 be a husband to my wife. Because if you all know about blood, if there's no blood flowing, there's no blood flowing. Come on, somebody. <laughs> right? Uh, some of you can that <laughs> so, so, so now I'm excited. You know, I'm telling people. So, so what my encouragement, when God tells you he's going to heal you, you walk and talk in your healing. Yes, sir. Right. right? You're almost like a president of the United States, right? You, you campaign, right? God is healing me. God is healing me. I'm going to get my healing. I'm going to stand at pul pulpit. I'm going to get my healing. God touch me. Even though you're not actually healed, but you're believing. So when the day you become healed, you walk right into that office. Amen? Amen. You walk right into that healing. You do not uh, uh, doubt. You do not. You ask for things, and God is faithful as long as we're not doubting. So now I have my heart. Now uh, they dropped in the heart. You know, all of a sudden I can see again. Before I would see like a dull, like that orange, uh, or like a red, right? Like, man, that's a dull red. And, and man, that's like a HD red. Like literally, I saw like almost like in black and white. Remember the old televisions where you could turn down and it looks kind of like dim color? That's, I didn't realize how sick I was. I was seeing everything in that dim color. Mm -hmm. When they put the heart into me, HD. Yeah. HD, it sounds like I got these like these little big beautiful TVs like in Costco. Like I can see like that, right? <laughs> because that's how bad I was seeing because the blood was affecting my eyes. Also then I heard, boom. Like, if you ever went swimming, and then all of a sudden your ear pops, and you're like, wow, like it was muffled, and then you could hear again. So when the heart got dropped in, I could hear again. Wow. Everything was loud. Hey, turn down that beep, beep, beep. <laughs> Man, that thing is screaming at me, right? So, so then I could feel with my skin, right? I could feel, man, it's cold in here. Or the sun would beat on my skin, and I'm like, man, the sun is hot because I've been numb. For over yeah. for like three years, four years. I didn't forgot how it was to feel hot or cold. Because wow. you need you you, you, use, uh, you get desensitized for not having the proper blood. And I want us to, to kind of follow along in the spiritual realm as well, yeah. because that's what happens to us as believers spiritually. You know, yeah. we're not seeing as clear, we're not hearing like we should. You know, we're not we're not feeling like we should. You know, so so I want us to kind of coordinate because I want to kind of keep that close together. <laughs> Ultimately, I'm healed. I'm healed, and, and I can either, I got an offer to be on disability for the rest of my life, collect the checks, or I could get put back to work. At the time, I was uh, working on the line crews for Southern California Edison, so I was a grounder, so I, I would do like power pole replacements, I would do high beam pole sets, you know, like 24 hour work, right? And I could have just kicked back for the rest of my life. I click a check, I'm good. But I went back to work. Six months later, I went to pole climbing school. I, I climbed the poles six months after heart transplant, got my job back, and I started working. Amen. Amen. Oh, so, so why am I saying that? Why am I saying that? Because the devil will offer think that the devil will try to offer you a deal that you think is sweet. Mm -hmm. But I but I remember, Lord, I need to work. Yeah. I prayed for work. I remember looking out of the blinds uh, in my house, and I would watch the gardeners, and I was so weak. I said, Lord, let me just be a gardener. Come on now. Let me just be able to push a long one. And then the Lord said, okay, now you got your heart. Now you're going to work hard. Right? So an answer of prayer is not only is not a sunshine and roses. Uh, <laughs> an answer of prayer is hard work. Right? I ended up going back to work, working hard, you know, hard striving, pumping, right? Uh, and, and I ended up uh, not only getting a heart transplant, uh, and just being saved physically, but the Lord blessed me with more children. Uh, are my children here, right here? Roberto. Ricardo. Ricardo was, was my first son that had post transplant. 
It's 14 years today when I got my heart transplant. Ricardo is 11 years old, so he was my first child post-transplant. Rodolfo, Rodolfo, right? Rodolfo is, was my last child. He's uh, seven years old after transplant. And Roberto, Roberto's in the restroom right now. <laughs> and then Raymond was my rock right here, my oldest, and he was four years old when I was going through the whole transplant. I think he was my rock, he was my strength. That kept me going. Come on. As, I, as I'm closing, I want to give one more last crucial part of this testimony. Now, you're, you're healed. God is blessing you. But now you got to maintain the miracle. Maintain the miracle. What am I saying? What am I saying? God is teaching me how to nourish the miracle. Post-treatment. Why did Jesus save me? Why did I get saved? What did we, why? Because to live the rest of my life to glorify God. Amen. Live the rest of my life to, to fulfill why God saved me, right? You know, the devil wanted to kill me, but God wanted to save me. But he didn't want to save me so I could hang out. He didn't want to save, save me so I could get by. He wanted to save me so that I could be used to impact the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Come on, man. So, one of the most important things, because just because you got a new heart, you got to learn how to manage that heart, right? And, and one thing that he showed me is that you live out uh, this, and, and I still got to get better, I still got to grow, I still got to give things over, I still got to die to the flesh, I still got to develop, I still got to challenge myself, I'm not there yet. God is still uh, in, in, in the process of my healing, even today when I'm standing before you. So what am I saying? What am I saying? I got a lot of work to do. I got a lot of work to do. I got to keep going. I got to keep fighting. I got to keep giving thanks. So I just wanted to give encouragement that the post-treatment is to live your life right for Jesus. Amen. Right? Every time sin comes my way, every time the devil is lying to me, I said, no, God saved me for a reason. Because it cause basically showed me this uh, illustration that you see on the wall out there, you have a wall out there right here? Well, the devil pulled the plug on and what the Jesus did is he kicked the devil, he picked up the plug, and now Jesus is standing holding the plug, right? Devil can't take the plug no more. But I'm not going to give Jesus reasons to take his hand off the plug. Does that make sense? Right? I'm, I'm going to live a life honoring God. I'm going to live a life, you know, submitted to God, right? The success of this miracle and all miracles is the post-treatment. Many of us are here testifying of miracles in our life. It's God, raise your hand, has God done a miracle in your life? So now God wants to re-examine or re-examine where we're at and he's asking, have you been living fully from when I gave you that miracle? And if not, I want to give you an opportunity to get back, to, to really put it back. Because God loves it to like, you know, you're gonna get reminded, it's right back up. So now uh, I wanna enter into a time of prayer, but first I wanna get, uh, uh, just for us to reflect, if the worship team comes up. And, I, and whatever the Lord was speaking to you, you know, whether how, how uh, you know, great it is or how little it is, uh, I would love, love the opportunity to just come into agreement with you, to pray with you, uh, you know, sometimes we might not be serving the Lord like we should. You know, maybe the Lord is saying, remember, I did that for you. And, and you kind of been slacking. You kind of been, you know, kind of not, kind of losing track a little bit. But that's why we're here. Amen. We're here because we, we get an opportunity and a chance to continue to live out why God has saved us. And I'm here to represent the Lord this morning. Uh, and I want to come into agreement with us. If the Lord is prompting you, if the Lord is, uh, you know, just, you know, get up there, get some prayer, get back in the process, get back into the growing, get back into the seriousness, keep a clean heart, keep a life uh, living uh, free from sin. I want to pray for you.